Welcome back to Impressive Media Solutions. I'm Kern Scott and this video is part of a full tutorial on Audacity. In this video guys, I'm going to show you how simple it is to get up and running and recording in Audacity. All right. So let's look at Audacity right now. If you don't have Audacity open, you could definitely start to open it so I could walk you through and you could see and take it step by step with me right now what we have open here is what audacity calls a project page and a project page is where you would do your recording or whatever project you have this is what we call a project page project page is where the magic happens basically okay so we could definitely hit this record button here and start recording right away but we need to make sure that our settings are correct because some recordings are just one time recording once we hit that button and we do let's say an interview or a voiceover with a particular voiceover person we just may not be able to capture back that moment or we may have to spend money to do over that recording so let's make sure we have our settings correct now there are two ways to make sure our settings are correct and we do have our settings on our project page and we do have settings on our edit preferences menu right now we can make our settings our default settings so that means every time we open a project in audacity we will always get the same settings now there may be times when we would want to change this behavior and we could do this on our project page and save it so what that means is that when we open a next or new project in audacity we will get back our default audacity behaviors right now let's look at this we have what is called our device toolbar right we have our device toolbar section and in this section what we call the audio host we have some settings right now we're not going to get too technical on it but this device accepts all audio devices right we have two which is basically the same we have one which was the first audio settings created by audacity and then we have a second one which is basically a new and improved um latency well not free or less more of a less latent version of the mme and then we have wasapi now why would you use wasapi wasapi is a loopback feature that means that if we are recording something and also playing something on the device that we would want played we will use this um, wasapi and it would capture what is playing on the computer and also our recording next we would want some sort of device that would be able to capture our performance and that would be this guy this is the microphone input and it's going to accept whatever we have plugged in now i'm using an io station 24c but depending on what you are using to record let's say it's your headphone or whatever you would select it and you will know it's selected when it comes up first all right now when we look at what we have here we have our input we also have some controls that controls this device right so when we start to record we have what is called our recording level so this is going to show us how hot or how soft we are coming in now definitely we'd want our signal anywhere between 12 or 6 and if we're getting too hot or too weak of a signal we could definitely adjust it here by either lowering the signal so that we're not getting an overly hot signal or raising the signal because our signal is definitely too soft right if you're not getting enough if you're using our audio interface you can raise it next we have what we call either mono or stereo track now this is important to set because when we start to record it's going to be initiated one time and we cannot change this right so mono track let's say simply i'm doing a one person recording i'm just doing a me podcast i could definitely just do this on a mono track let's say i want to record two person we have a trick that we could do with um a stereo with a stereo track 
and with a different type of interface called a mixer and we can plug in the two devices and pan them left and right and have similar recording that we can adjust later all right now a lot of the times you want to monitor what's going on so you can definitely hear what is going on and our output device would do that now you can listen through your speakers or through your audio interface and hear what you're recording off here signal is coming in too hot you can definitely lower it or if it's coming in too soft you can definitely raise it so these two do work in conjunction and you will definitely be able to see your signal levels here and finally guys we want quality right we want a certain amount of quality and this is what we call our sample rate our sample rate is going to determine the quality of our recording now when we think of sample rate we have to think of audio recording digitally it happens in a very strange way right what happens when we record audio into a computer it doesn't record our full length stuff it records it in different pieces and it records it in 44,100 samples and these samples placed together is what we get as one long piece of audio right now the more samples we can record definitely would increase the quality or the amount of details we are able to record and we could change this behavior by going to 48,000 sample in our recording now by default 40, 44 would definitely be okay but 48 would be better right it's always okay to record a little more so that when we bring it back down we are not taking away information or we are definitely future proofing ourselves so that if we need more information in the future we can always save the authentic file right now there's one more setting that we would only find in our preferences section and that's for quality and again guys we can make it our default setting so that we can leave it on 48 hertz so that every time we open a project we don't have to remember or we we don't have to worry about forgetting to set it right now we have one thing here that is called our pit depth and this sort of helps with our dynamic range now normally all devices comes all modern devices come at 24 bit which gives us really more detail in terms of dynamic range and what audacity did is they came in with their own 32 bit that gives us a little more now all the devices not capable it would also help us capture a little more details in terms of our dynamics so we could definitely leave that there at our default now it's time to get recording guys we can click this here and we could see our meters and we already have it here as a mono device so now it's just as simple as just clicking this record button and as you can see we have started to record we're seeing that the signal is coming in really nice and i'm going to raise the signal a bit and i'm going to stop the recording and i'm going to show you our stereo recording now and as, and as you can see, see our we stereo record. we're seeing that the signal is coming in really nice it's coming in on both left and right and i'm going to raise the signal a bit and there you have it guys as simple as that you are up and running make sure and check your settings first before you start to record make sure you have this um selected your audio device that is going to accept your recording or your microphone or whatever whether it be usb or audio interface to make sure and have it in first adjust those levels before you start to record um you can adjust for gain staging with your sliders to make sure and check your slide um your sample rate which is also very important all right guys there you have it how to record in audacity very simple not confusing task i'm Ken scott with impressive media solution now guys if you like this video and it was helpful do hit that like and subscribe button 
do share it with a friend free information guys and guys do support our channel as much as you can i'm kern and thank you for watching